back to our, our key verse for a moment, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. The New Living Translation says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. Hallelujah. To give you a future and a hope. You remember John, John's gospel? Jesus said in 10.10, in 10, he said, The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. In other words, you can simplify that and make it real easy. God is good and the devil is bad. Everybody say, God is good, the devil is bad. Well, that's simple theology, isn't it? In other words, if it's bad, where is it from? All right, y'all a little bit weak on that. If it's bad, where is it come, where is it from? The devil. If it's good, where is it from? God. The Scripture says every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. There's no, in him there's no variableness nor shadow of turning. God is not schizophrenic. One day he's good. The next day he's going to teach you a lesson. No. God does not do bad things to teach you a lesson. Oh, pastor, but what about, you know, what about Job? Uh, what about it? You obviously haven't read the, the book yet. Because if you read the book, you don't have to get very far where you realize it was the devil attacking Job. Amen. And God is good. If you read all the way to the end of it, you'll see Job had double. Amen. And not only that, if you start to study further, you realize that the whole book, the time frame of Job, was not very long. This was not years. It was a relatively short period of time. Come on. Amen. And so, no, you're not Job. <laughs> Say, I am not Job. Amen. If you were, you would have been over it a long time ago. No. You're just ignorant, which is okay because that can change. Yes. Say, I can change. I can grow. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to That's what we're about here, right? We're what? We're growing believers, Amen. teaching faith and impacting generations. Hallelujah. Well, when you have a believer who's mature, and knows how to walk in faith, you have somebody who's going to impact their world. They're going to impact their job. They're going to impact their family. Amen. They're going to impact people everywhere they go. Hallelujah. So God has a plan for your life. He has an assignment that is specific to your life that is tailored absolutely to you, that nobody else fits that same plan like you do. He told Jeremiah in the first chapter, he said, before you were formed in the womb, I knew you. Well, if he knew Jeremiah, he knew you. Think about that. God knew you before you were even formed in your mother's womb. He has a plan. He has an assignment for you. And the greatest thing you can do in your life is discover what that is and walk in the fullness of it. And that is the satisfaction, the, the fun, the adventure, everything that you could ever dream of living for is wrapped up in that plan and purpose God has for your life. Amen. The disappointment comes when we get our own ideas tangled in there and it gets kind of snarled up. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So just to hit on this once again, you can't find in your Bible where it says, you know, uh, Dave, you're supposed to go to this place and this is what your job is, is and career is. All those kind of details are not in the Scripture. I get that from the Spirit of God. As I seek God, as I pray, He reveals that to me. And He's not withholding it from me. He said in His Word, No good thing will He withhold from them that walk uprightly. Well, if you're born again, 
washed in the blood, you are upright. And God is not withholding anything from you. He's not withholding direction. He's not holding that back from you. His plan, his assignment for your life, he is not withholding that. Well, then, Pastor, how come, how come I don't know what it is? Because you've got to get yourself in a position to receive. God is not a mind. He is not the guy, great mind in the sky. He's not, a, he's not an intellect. God is a spirit. And when he speaks, he speaks to your spirit. He speaks to my spirit. He does not speak to my head. He doesn't. All right? Say, God speaks to my spirit, not to my head. All right. So that's really simple. But if you can get a hold of that, as simple as it is, it will change your life. Because when you go to seek God and get direction from him, you'll know where to look. You look here and not here. Remember the scripture says, don't lean on your own understanding or your own thinking, your mind. Amen? So we look to our spirit man. Somebody said it this way, dip down on the inside. That's where the answer is. Dip down on the inside. It's like you go to the refrigerator and you look for something, and you look in there and you don't see it. You look around, you go back there and, and look again. No, it's not there. You go back and look in the same refrigerator three or four times. It's still not, not there. And it's not going to be there, is it? You would have found it the first. So the answer is not in your head. The answer the direction, the assignment for your life, God does not download it to your brain. He downloads it, so to speak, into your spirit, into your heart. So that means that we've got to take time and get this quiet because your brain can get so busy and so noisy is that it's almost impossible to hear what your spirit man is saying. It's, it's, it's a very human thing to do is to get so caught up in, in thinking and the circumstances and analyzing, and you, and you go round and round and round. You think through it, and you think through it again. You think through it all day long. I'm just like you are. You turn it over and over and over, and you run every possible scenario that you can. And what if this? And what if that? And when you're finally, you think, well, huh, then the devil says, well, what about you didn't think about this yet? And it'll run you on a whole new bunch of... But the answer isn't here. The answer is in your spirit. So how do you get to where you can hear What's going on on the inside from your spirit? Getting this quiet. It means you've got to put this away. Your phone doesn't speak to your spirit. All right. I know a lot of people put good scriptures on Facebook. That's wonderful. And Instagram or whatever social media you have. Thank God for people that love God. But you don't need to hear from people. You need to hear from God for yourself because God's going to reveal it to you. He doesn't want you to have to run to somebody else to get direction from him. That's kind of an insult. No, he wants to talk to you, and he's going to talk to your spirit, not to your brain. So we, we put this away, and we get ourselves physically, physically in a place where we're separated from things. Uh, maybe that's a closet at the house. I mean, I remember growing up being at the house, and I, I wanted a place to pray. There was a tiny little closet. There was a little shelf in there, and I managed to get a chair 
through the door, and I could sit there. I mean, it was like, and, you know, it wasn't much. It was just a tiny little, but it was a place where I was physically separated from everything going on in the house. Didn't have a cell phone back then. No worries there. But I get in there and pray because I wanted to hear from God. Now, you can go maybe, you know, off somewhere where there's a trail or something, but just where you physically separate yourself from the, all the outside, all the noise. And then once you're there in that place, come on, this is some, this is some help for somebody. Then it's still going to take a little bit of time to get this quiet. You know, it's like, uh, you know, the washing machine at our house, these modern washing machines, they spin at an outrageous speed. It's wonderful because the clothes are half dry when you take them out of there, you know. It's spun so fast. But, you know, when it's been spinning that fast, the old washing machines, you know, once you hit stop, you know, it was just, you know, 10, 15 seconds the thing stopped spinning. Not the new ones. You have to wait and wait and wait for that because it's spinning so fast. Well, sometimes your brain is like that washing machine. It's been in the spin cycle trying to figure things out, and it's been going so fast, you're going to have to take a little bit of time to get this to slow down, settle down, and be quiet. Hallelujah. And you can be praying in the Holy Ghost the whole time, you know, you can pray in the Holy Ghost and think at the same time. That's not always a blessing. Because you're trying to hear from here, and this is still going. And you're praying about your situation. You're praying in other tongues about it, and your head's going. I'm just like you. We're all the same. Our brain wants to do that. You got to get this quiet. Yeah, we're talking about the assignment that God has for you. Amen. And, and walking in that assignment. So, we need to keep moving here. All right. So, you don't see in the word specifics for your life. But then we said also, though, we said God's written plan, in other words, what's written in His word, is just as important to your life as what he leads you by his spirit. So we have to be doers of the written word. In other words, you can't be, uh, you know, walking in God's assignment for your life and living in sin. Uh, you're going you're gonna to run off the road. You've got to walk, you and I have to walk in obedience to the written word of God as well as following the Spirit of God. And the Holy Ghost will never lead you to do something that's contrary to the written Word. Never, never. The Word and the Spirit agree. Amen. He won't lead you. If you're married, the Holy Ghost will not lead you to your soulmate. You're like, oh my gosh, we know that. Yeah, but we do, but... It's amazing how many people, they leave the, a marriage for their soulmate and completely destroy their family and mess up the plan of God, and sometimes they never recover. Come on. So the Holy Ghost won't do that. He won't lead you like that. He'll lead you to love your wife. He'll lead you to love your husband. Amen. Amen. And listen, with the blessing of God on your marriage, a soulmate w would never come close to that anyway. Amen. Never. The blessing of the Lord makes rich and there's no sorrow. Amen. It's just not worth it. The, you know, the grass, they say the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. We figured out when we were kids that the grass is greener around the dog mess. You all know what I'm talking about. You see a, a nice, lush, green spot out in the yard, watch out. <laughs> All right, you got that one pretty quick. Y'all are, are sharp this morning. All right. 
Praise God. So, talking about God's assignment for your life, a plan for you, the, the title of this one is Assigned To. Because in his assignment for you, he has an assi- a place that you're assigned to. And we're going to talk about the context of the local church. Because God assigns you to a place as well as, and, and see, they fit together. God's assignment for you dovetails to what he's assigned you to. You all know what a dovetail is. All right, we've got a picture here of a dovetail. All right, that's a dovetail. You see how that fits together? You all have probably seen furniture with dovetail, wood joint, two boards, and they're fit together like that, and it's super strong, very stable. Well, God's plan, his assignment for your life dovetails to the local body that he assigns you to. And the both parts are a strength to one another. Do you, you see what I'm talking about? God assigns you to a place for a purpose. One thing strengthens the other. And that's what God's plan for your life does when you get in the place where you think, well, you know, I just can't get. Well, you know, my, my best illustration of my life, because I'll talk about me, I know me, but when I went out to Oklahoma to just go to school, and I've shared this story before, but going out there to go to Rama, back in that day, there were Rama students who went to other churches. Now, if you go to school out there, you have, I mean, there's no choice. You have to go to Rama Bible Church. But back in that day, you actually had a choice of where you went to church. And so I wanted to go to Church on the Move, which was pastored by Willie George. And I just, I liked the way that he ministered, you know. And see, Dad Hagen never pastored the church, Rhema Bible Church. It was Pastor Kenneth Hagen Jr. that still pastors the church to this day. And tremendous man of God, but, you know, some people like barbecue, vinegar-based. Some people like Texas barbecue. That's just what you like, right? Some like Italian food. So I just liked Pastor Willie George. I liked his illustrations. I felt like I just really connected. And not only that, but some of my family went to that church. And it was a good church. I mean, spirit-filled that, you know, the Holy Ghost moved in their services, people healed, good word, good word church, um, excellent music. I really liked the music. And my, my brother and his wife went there and all that. I wanted to go to church on the move. But God had assigned me to Rhema Bible Church. How did I know that? Well, if you turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, no, you won't find it there. No, there's no scripture there that says Dave goes to bring a Bible church. <laughs> now, I think there's a verse about Samuel going to Rama. <laughs> but my name's not Samuel. No, how did I know that? Because I just knew it in my spirit. I knew it on the inside. But my head, I did not like that. And I could put up a pretty good argument. (laughs) All right. I like John Osteen. He said, the greatest thing I ever learned all my life, God is smarter than me. And so I just said, all right, Lord. I just knew in my heart where I was supposed to be. And so I went to Rama Bible Church. That's all I knew is that's where I was supposed to go. That's all you need to know. Well, say, Lord, why do you want me to go there? Don't be surprised if he does not give you an answer. You don't need to know why. Faith pleases God. Obedience. 
Just obey him and do what he said. Just obey him. Say, Lord, all you have to do is say, Lord, I don't need to know why. I just need to know where. You take care of the rest. And you can trust him. And so I went there. And listen, I did not sit on the back row at Ramah every Sunday. Yeah, there's where I'm supposed to be. Not sure why. I like the other church better, but this is where I'm supposed to be, so I'll be here. You know, that's a good way to get in trouble with God real quick. Because, you know, some people think being faithful means being there. That's not what God means when he talks about faithfulness. Faithful means you're there and you have a good attitude. Your heart's right. Amen. Amen. Come on. There's no reward in being there. That right. Being where there is not being faithful. So what did I do at Ramah? I got involved. Played saxophone, so there I am in the orchestra. Every Sunday, Wednesday is when I needed to be. I was there for practice. I was there on time. When practice started, I wasn't coming in the door trying to get my horn out of the case, get my reed wet, get ready to go. I was there. So when practice started, back then it was, you know, Pastor Dan Morrison was the worship leader. I was there sitting in my chair when he came walking out to start practice. I was there, or service. I was there. I was faithful. That's, that's all I knew. Be there, be faithful, which means, to being useful. So, I mean, the church is like a physical body. The Scripture uses that analogy. So every part of your body has a purpose. There's no part of your body that's just there for no reason, that just is there. Every part has a purpose and a use, all right? So when it comes to the local church, every member of the body has a purpose and a use. Nobody should just be there. Hallelujah. Come on, this is good. This is what helps us. I know, I know the word of God will offend your mind, but that's okay. That's okay. It just means that change is inevitable. Right? And so every part of the body has a purpose and a use. And so a part of the body that doesn't have any use, what happens? Well, we could see what Jesus said. In John chapter, I think chapter 15, I am the vine, you are the branches. There's another part of the gospel of John that says, my, hu- my father is the husbandman. I am the vine. You know, whatever branch doesn't produce fruit gets a comfortable seat on the front row where they can just continue to sit. No. You want, you want fruit in your life. You want your life to be fruitful for the kingdom because, listen, when I was at Raymond and I was, I, I didn't know a thing. I was just showing up there in the orchestra playing, doing what I was supposed to do, being faithful, having a good attitude. And then one day, and I had no clue about it, one day they asked me to audition to travel to, with the, the band that travels with Dad Hagen. A paid position. I mean, travel and everything, in meetings, I mean, it was like, ah, I had no clue in the world. I did not see that ahead. But I had to, I had to walk by faith and be faithful and be useful and be a blessing where I was in order to qualify for that. I could have royally missed God by going to a great church that was not the church. 
It was a great church. They still, I think they're the biggest church in Tulsa possibly. I mean, huge, doing big things. But I just wasn't supposed to be there. I wanted to be there in the flesh, in the natural. But thank God for a good pastor back in Connecticut that he came up under. Thank God for good parents who taught me to be faithful and have a good attitude that I qualified for a promotion that I never dreamed would come. Hallelujah. So God has an awesome assignment for your life. It's a wonderful plan. But he's, he's probably not going to show you the whole thing ahead of time. Why? Because we have to live by faith. Faith pleases him. Hallelujah. Think about the word faithful. Faithful, full of faith. People that are full of faith are happy people. Why? Because they know God's working. They know God has a plan, and I don't have to see all it is, but I know it's going to be good. Amen. They're believing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then, you know, of course, I married Kendall July 9th, 1994, Perry, Georgia. Woo! Hallelujah. It keeps getting better. Amen. We just, Friday, yeah, we met out there at Rama, Rama Bridal Training Center. <laughs> no, it's, it was Rama Bible Training Center, but that was, that was a... a a going joke, you know, another one was ring by spring. Start school in the fall, a ring by spring. No. So, you know, and I, I've talked about opportunities there. We got married, and I thought she was going to be in the band and travel with me. Man, we were just going to be right in the middle of God's highest and best for our life and wonderful, and didn't work out like I thought. And it was not easy to deal with. But I didn't know enough to keep my heart right. And look what God has done for us. Amen. Because I couldn't see, but I just knew. All right, so here's an answer for you right here. It has served me so well for so many years. Situations. Why? How? Da, da. I come back to what I know. What do you know? What do you know? Forget about what you don't know. You can't do anything about it. What do you know? I knew. Stay faithful. I knew. Keep my heart right. I knew. Don't make a change if I don't know. Just keep doing what I know. God is faithful. He's not going to let me down. He is faithful. If he's faithful to me, he's faithful to you. Hallelujah. I, I mean, I thought it was God's plan for us to travel together. I was convinced of it. Other people told me so. But it didn't happen. Huh. You know, a lot of people told me that Donald Trump was going to do another term. <laughs> Got y'all. Yeah. People prophesied it. Men of God prophesied it. The prophets prophesied it. Man, God must, must have really been shocked <laughs> when those, you know, when things happened. God, I mean, I'm sure he had to take a step back and say, whoa, just a minute. What are we going to do? Jesus, did you know that was going to happen? But see, we, in, our, in our own reasoning, we, we have a perspective that's different than God's perspective about our lives. And, and God has blessed us and, and done things. And, you know, we never missed a beat. Never 
missed a beat. That's not because I'm great. It's just because God's faithful. And just knowing to do, just, just be faithful, keep my heart right. Well, he did it. So I keep getting on these rabbit trails here, but I know it's helping us. So God has a place that you're assigned to. Assigned to. We talked about this uh, back earlier, in, I guess it was early in the year. It was about the local church, about the, the ecclesia. You all remember that? And, um, you know, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, it says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some. Boy, that, I wonder if God knew about COVID when he uh, inspired this, wor- this verse to be written. Um, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. Right? Um, the, the devil loves to keep people in fear. Hallelujah. He loves to keep people in fear. That's how he wants to ch- shut, the, shut the church down, is make people think that it's safer at home and Walmart and all the other stores that everybody goes to but won't go to church. Come on. The folks that, aren't, that aren't, still aren't going to a church, they're out of God's best. And they're in fear. And you can't experience God's best when you're in fear. Hallelujah. Y'all need to get back in church again. Yeah, you out there. Y'all need to get back in church again. That's where the blessing of God is for your life. You're missing it. You're missing it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just telling you what the word says. I know y'all are here, so they're, you, know, you know I'm not talking to you. <laughs> but the two YouTube goes, it goes to YouTube, and there's people that need to be in church because God's got things for them, blessings for them. Amen? Amen. So in, in talking about the local church, God has called us together. And your assignment is fits with the local body because it's a place where you develop, where you grow. It's a place where you qualify for promotion. Hallelujah. It's a place where you qualify for promotion. Remember in Ephesians chapter 4, he said, he, in, the, he said in the church, God said in the church, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting, the King James says, really a better translation would say, for the maturing of the saints for the work of the ministry. So a place where you can grow spiritually. Amen. See, when we're all together, when we keep coming, well, you just go to a church once, you don't have to hardly walk in love with anybody. But when you keep getting around the same people and, and working and serving together, and, you know, somebody's talking about you or somebody, you know, whatever, gets sideways with somebody, you have an opportunity to grow, to, walk, to develop your love walk. Amen? Amen? And especially when I say something, when the pastor says something that you don't like, you have an opportunity to pick up your marbles and go play somewhere else. <laughs> I don't like the way they play marbles here. I'm going to another church. That's fine. God won't stop you. But where did he assign you? Right. Where did he assign you? He assigned you someplace where you're going to have to grow. God will never assign you to a place where you won't grow. He'll never assign you to a place where you're going to be comfortable. And they do things the way that you like them done. Because he knows you really well. And he knows just where to put you, where somebody or something is just going to get right under your flesh. (laughs) Hallelujah. Get right in there. 
Ooh. And you're going to have to grow. You're going to have to say, you know what? I'm not going to be offended. 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 Hallelujah. Just, that's where he's going to put you. Where you're going to, it's going to make you grow. Hallelujah. Come on. If Jesus is Lord of your life, he's going to have something to say about where you go to church. Jesus is going to have, if he's Lord of your life, he's going to have something to say about the people that you hang around. If Jesus is Lord of your life, he's going to have something to say about the things that you do in the places that you go. Hallelujah. Isn't he? Yeah. If he's Lord. Amen. And we, we trusting him because he's a faithful master and shepherd, we're going to say, Lord, I trust you. I can't see it, and I don't like them, but I trust you. And we put a smile on our face and continue on. Why? Because our future is connected to it. Our assignment, us fulfilling our assignment is connected to it. Amen. Amen. And, you know, there are times, you know, when the promotion comes and he may move you somewhere or whatever, but you've been faithful. Amen? And there's a peace on the inside. There's a knowing. Hallelujah. And there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. And then, you know, a local church, many times, you know, it's a, a longer-term relationship, long for years and years. And God's, he's blessing you and increasing you and doing things in your life. And, you know, you've become an influence in the community. I mean, everybody's life is different. But he's connected. He has assigned you to. Amen. Say, he's assigned me to. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And he'll, he'll let you know. How do he let you know? You have that witness on the inside. You have that witness on the inside. Amen. Is this okay, y'all? I sure hope it is. I believe it is. Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said, he said, I... And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. As Jesus said, I will build my church. And so that lets us know right there, if you want to be part of what God is building, what are you going to be part of? A local church. A local People say, well, you know, I'm, you know we're all in the universal church. And we are, but again, we, we, we're not going to go back into it, but we're talking about the church that 90, well, just somewhere over 80% of the time in the New Testament talking about the church is referring to a local church, not the universal church. Amen. So it's not enough just to be part of the universal church. He's called us to be part of a local church. To be in a local church. What does it mean to be in a local church? If you're in a church, you are involved. Amen. You have a purpose. You are useful. Just like all the parts of your body are useful. What happens if you're, you wake up tomorrow morning and your right arm is no longer useful? It's not good. Amen. So your, your assignment, God's plan for your life, is he connects you, he dovetails you to a place that strengthens you, that is a supply to your life, and you bring your supply. Amen. And then when he says, I'm building my church, you could say, yep, I'm part of what God is building. Amen. There's no building materials set in a pile. Well, that, we've got building materials there, but we're not going to use them on this project. No, they're just going to sit there. No, God's smarter than that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody say praise God. Praise say God. thank God thank for the word of God. God has a plan for you. He has an assignment for your life. Yeah. I just wanted to make you so hungry for it that you can't do anything. Till you at least find out what the next step is. 
till you're walking in it, hungry for it, living for it. Amen? And that's, see, when you get to that place, that's when all the things fit. We're going to wrap this up. We're going to have communion in a few minutes here. There's so many things. Sometimes we, you know, faith for this and faith for that, and things don't seem to be working. It's just because we're not, we don't have any momentum in our life. We're trying to, you know, we're trying to steer a parked car. But when you're moving in the plan of God and the purpose of God, and you have a, a purpose for your faith, you're believing God for things, you have goals and things that you're doing with his assignment for your life, all of a sudden, faith takes on a whole new dimension. You see, yeah, that's, that's what that is. And all of a sudden, verses that, you know, you kind of knew and were doing, all of a sudden it's like, oh, that is what that verse is for. Ah, revelation. Things that were just kind of like, yeah, there, it's a good verse. All of a sudden, that verse becomes a part of you because it's part of God's assignment for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Did this help you all this morning? Amen. Amen. God wants you solid. He wants you strong in his purpose and plan. Amen. Amen. And I believe at this church, this is some place where you can be solid. And that's, I'm not taking credit for that. Anybody who will do the word and be a doer of the word. So who, who gets the glory? God does. All we say is say, Lord, I was just doing what your word said. I was just doing my best to be faithful to what you said do. And the blessings are flowing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.